Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, are you ready to call forth your daily bread? I'm so excited, you know, you know. Now, why am I so excited? Not just that we're calling forth our daily bread. I'm excited because the Lord has given us a key. You know, Jesus said to Peter, I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Now, what are those keys? They're instructions. He tells you what. He gives you, he, he, you know, for example, we've been doing this broadcast for a while. Then the Lord, you know, showed us and said, hey, from henceforth, every day on this broadcast, you must lead my children to make demand for their daily bread. Okay, sir. Thank you. you. See that now? Now, I I normally have been practicing this for a very long time and it's been working. And now the Lord brought this instruction. It means he's so concerned about you. And that's why I'm convinced that a miracle is going to happen in your life today. Join me right now and declare. Say, Father, I demand today for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, on Monday, I was sharing with you from Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. I didn't forget. I told you yesterday I didn't forget. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now he says, I, I remember I was telling you, explaining to you what Logos is. He says, the word of God is quick and active. The word of God is, is let me read it now. It says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of souls and spirit and of joints and marrows, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. That was explained to you on Monday what Logos is. Logos is the word of God that tells you about his character, his personality, and his ability. See that now? Now, why is it important to know the different things? Because Logos is one, then Rema is the other one. Now, what is Rema? Rema is the word of God that comes to you and giving you specific instructions on what to do. Now, the both of them are very important in your life. And you must be receiving the two. And it's important you know, kid, I am receiving Logos right now. What does Logos do? Logos establishes you. Because you see, the knowing of God's character gives you stability. The knowing of God's ability helps you trust Him. The knowing of God's personality and shaping you into who he is. And of course, that's what he wants us to be. If I don't know his personality, how do I learn from him? There are prophets who have worked with God. Their words were sharp, but they never understood God. They didn't know his personality. So you know what? They couldn't function as God would have them in their personalities. So you see a prophet who prophesies, who tells you everything that's going to happen and these things will happen exactly the way he prophesied. And then you call him a great man of God. But then when it comes to decision making in his own life, you will be amazed. He would wonder, are you sure this man truly used to hear God because how can he make such decisions in his life they make stupid I'm, 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 I say this with all respect but that's the, the best way to qualify it decisions that will land them in big time trouble what's their problem were they false prophet not necessary but you see, you can be a prophet of God being used by God, but you don't know God. The knowledge of God is not impacted 
Nobody can lay hands on you to know God. The knowledge of God is by relationship. You can only know him when you relate with him. Nobody can truly teach you the knowledge of God. Men can only tell you their own experiences with him from which you can deduce. But to know him is a personal thing. And because he is the one that will have to reveal himself to you. So when he's revealing himself to you, the question then is what do you see? So that's why I have to split between Rema and Logos. Because there are people who will tell you, God speaks to me every morning. Yet, you look at their lives. It's, it seems their life is going south. <laughs> Why God is going north? You can't just corroborate. You can't just put the two of them together. What's the problem? They are used by God. Does God speak to them? Yes. Then, all they hear is Rema, Rema, Rema. Now, I, I know in Christian, they all say Rema. You know, like, you know somebody's preaching and you just share something that you consider deep. Say, woo, Rema, Rema. That's not what I'm talking about. The Rema I'm talking about is somebody can always hear God say, turn left, turn right, go here. I'm like, yeah. So, so that's how I move. Now, that as wonderful as that is, if you don't apply your mind. Now, there is one thing for God to do his part. There's another thing for you to understand what God is doing. Now, this is the problem with a lot of people. And that's why I'm sharing these things with you. For example, you know, I've, I've used this many times. Jesus fed the 5,000. Now, they didn't come to him to say, Master, uh, we need to feed the people. No, it was Jesus' idea. He looked at them and said, where are we going to get bread to feed all these people? They looked at him and said, ah, Master, how do we do that? How much bread are we going to buy? Them? And Jesus said, no. What do we have? He said, oh, we have five loaves and two fishes. He said, make the men sit down. Bring it. He blessed it. He distributed it. Now, take note, they didn't ask from Jesus. It was his own decision. Then after that, there was another occasion. 4,000 people this time. And he did the same thing. Wow. And then, the next time they were traveling, and Jesus made a statement to them and he says, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisee and the Sadducee. And then they begin, began to re, um, they began to say amongst themselves that, oh, we're in trouble. We didn't carry bread. So now Jesus is talking about bread. So we've made this mistake now. And when Jesus got to understand what they were thinking, he rebuked them. And what did Jesus say? Hey, you guys, what's wrong with you? Have you forgotten the 5,000? And how many loaves were left? Have you forgotten the 4,000 and how many remained? Okay, hold on. Hold on. I really want you to understand this. Jesus said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisee and the Sadducee. So, they misunderstood what he said. And because he used the word leaven, which is yeast, Yeast is connected to bread. So he threw an open statement. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisee and the Sadducee. Mm. So Pharisees, they make their yeast. Sadducees, they make their yeast. Their minds were thinking product. So now Jesus is saying, maybe in this village or in this place we are going to, they sell more bread that is made by the Pharisee yeast or the Sadducee yeast. So now, how are we going to identify which bread was made from Pharisee yeast and Sadducee yeast? It would have just been better if we had carried bread from home. So at least we know that Jesus eats that one. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, this was how their minds were working. And so they began to say, wow, look at, look at what we cost now. We didn't carry bread. Truth be told, I don't think they were thinking that they were going to carry bread to feed a whole crowd and be walking around from city to city. No, that's not what they were thinking. They were thinking that Jesus would need bread to either eat for himself or for them to eat. And now Jesus is now telling them that, in their minds, I mean, that there is a kind of bread, a kind of yeast that he would not like to eat. So they began to worry and say, oh, we should have carried bread. And Jesus said, what is wrong with you guys? Two times I have called for bread. Was it from you? So Jesus reminded them those two times. And they said, how come you guys are thinking bread is going to be a problem? Meaning, Jesus was upset with their thinking. I pray you understand this. Twice he did that miracle of his own volition. And Jesus was expecting them. The moment their mind go to, we will need bread. Their mind is supposed to go to the fact that, no, Jesus is here. And if Jesus is here, bread is not our issue. So, so imagine when Jesus said, made that statement, beware of the level of the Pharisees. Assuming they were right, that that's what Jesus meant. And someone said, oh, we didn't carry our own bread. And someone said, Abba, no, but I don't think so. If we need bread, Jesus knows what to do. We've, we've been beneficiaries of his, I mean, of this before twice. So I don't think that's what Jesus is talking about. Or let's not worry about that. Jesus would have nodded his hand and said, you got it. You see that now? Why? Because he did that miracle twice. And that's to make a statement to them that this is what God loves doing. Now, Jesus just did it twice. God himself did it for 40 years with the children of Israel. Now, so when he says, now remember I'm talking about what Logos is. And if you don't understand Logos, you have issues. So God can be telling a man everything to do. But if the man does not apply his mind to understand what God is up to. So the children of Israel, God was feeding them with manna for 40 years. But guess what? they couldn't apply their mind to understand that God is giving them a training on how to live with him. So imagine being fed with manna every day and yet every one of those days you are waking up wondering what if this thing ends today. Instead of pausing and asking yourself, because I'm sharing this because many of you see miracles in your life, yet you don't know the reason for those miracles. God, hear me, uh, uh, the moment God have done something, the same kind of thing or miracle or pattern in your life, you know this is God and he has done it twice in your life. It's enough for you to sit down and reason it out that hey i think i know what god is interested in doing in my life at least i have found one it was not a fluke god doesn't do miracles in your life because you 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 were lazy god doesn't do miracles listen god can wake you up and tell you what to do if he wants you to do it but if god shows up and you know sometimes people think those things you understand what i'm saying your your bill your house rent for example it's due you haven't saved money for it now not because you are so foolish that you were just eating up all the money you know cares needs here needs there but then it happens that the time has come and then you go god i need your help i need help father please show me mercy i need help and then God supernaturally pays the bill. Now, what do I mean supernaturally? I don't mean um, the landlord calls you and says, Oh, I saw your money. 
and then like money from me he said yeah that's all i'm talking about even though god can do that but what i'm talking about is you know help just showed up something came up the money just came i mean something legit something legal came up and the money just came and then you went wow thank you jesus thank you jesus and then now you're thinking oh okay next month i'm going to plan better and then of course life happens you still didn't get it right in your mind and god does it again brothers and sisters go and sit down god have taken off the bill for paying of your house from you take it from me he has if you worry again it is a sign that you don't trust him i'll stop here today because our time is up praise god i'll see you tomorrow i pray that the spirit of god will guide and help you today in jesus mighty name amen god bless you i'll see you tomorrow.